Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Friday live stream. So today, as the title and thumbnail suggests, it looks like Bitcoin has done something that is never done. And uh, that is good news for people who are into the ETF. And that big news is BlackRock Bitcoin ETF edges grayscale Bitcoin in daily trade volumes for the very first time. Now, before I get into this article, you would look at this and go, oh, that's extremely bullish. That means that uh, everything should be going up and it's gonna be awesome and rainbows and mad, no. So like today, just so everybody knows, uh, Bitcoin is actually down 0.7% in the hour and in 24 hours it's actually down 0.2%. So even though we have some extremely bullish news, that's just the way the market goes. However, the overall trend is where I'd like to see it. So here's what we have. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust ETF has dominated trading volumes in the first three weeks of the spot ETF. And I got to tell you, I did not think that uh, it actually get approved, and it did. And of course, uh, everybody thought it was going to be fantastic. I still didn't think it was going to be that great. And it wasn't. And uh, here we are because of the fact that, unfortunately, uh, Grayscale had a lot of, I'd like to say, cancerous investors. And some of those would be the FTX trying to dump and uh, you know having to get things back for their creditors, which is not, there's no problem with that. It is that we had to go through this whole process to get to where we are at today. So while Grayscale Bitcoin notched trading volumes of about 292 million on Thursday, BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin Trust saw, saw volumes of $302 million yesterday. So this is extremely good news. We knew this would actually happen. We knew that there at some point would be some kind of supply issues, because some, as some people would say, a supply shock. And we all pretty much know where things are going. Now, this is just a generalized assumption. Everything can go to zero, of course. I have to say that as a responsible non-financial advisor, I have to tell you these things. But uh, I think, we're, again, like we're in the right place at the right time. And, you know, when we take a look at this, and we talked about this yesterday on the uh, NFA live show, which uh, this is from uh, Tomas, heyapollo.com. And it just it was an overall trend and it made sense. It's like, you know, I know that it's not at 50,000 like some people thought it would. I know it doesn't seem like we'll ever get back to the all time highs. I know it feels like the having that's coming up may not be a big event. Trust me when I say this, it was the exact same thing back in 2020 when we got the corona sickness and nobody thought we would ever hit all-time highs when Bitcoin was sitting at $3,000 in March of 2020. However, it just seemed to work out. So yeah, again, there was a uh, uh, the trend as the, the grayscale outflows started to decrease. And this is going back to January 29th. Of course, you know, had a couple of days later and now here we are right where we are supposed to be. So. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And before we talk about a concerning issue about Bitcoin and electricity, I'll get to all that. There's, a, there's an emergency declaration by the government and what they want to investigate. I just want to talk about Jupiter real quick and the narrative. Jupiter, if you don't know, it is a Solana DEX. And I've been talking about it for a while. It works quite well. And uh, there's other DEXs that work just fine. I, I mean, I have no problems with any other DEXs that are out there, MimSwap or Trader Joe or Unis, I, I don't. I mean, I use them all because I have to get into some degenerate place. It's just the truth. But there's always a narrative around these occurrences, especially airdrops and especially anything that's, that's new. And, that, and the narrative usually is, at first it's elation, everybody's happy, and then it's, this is the worst thing of all time. And then we look deeper and we're like, oh, that's really how it's supposed to go. So here's what we got. Jupiter airdrop draws criticism, but support remains strong. So if you don't know, uh, Jupiter, if you had used uh, the Jupiter DEX before, I think it was November 23rd, 2023, uh, using any kind of uh, wallet that you had, if you had done that, you were eligible for the airdrop. I did not use Jupiter before that. I actually used Orca a lot before I discovered Jupiter. So I wasn't involved in this. Wish I would have, but uh, I still bought a little bit because I think, I think Jupiter is going to do pretty well. Anyhow, Jupiter team aimed to use Jupe as a cornerstone for DeFi 2.0, focusing on expansive growth ecosystem initiatives and a governance model that would evolve to incorporate significant community decision making. Well, that sounds good. I like that. Here's where things went wrong. A key issue is raised by observers set around the Jupiter team's method of offering Jupe on the open market. They say it has doubled as a capital 
fundraising strategy. And uh, this is Lord Ashrick. No idea who this is, but somebody on uh, X that people were uh, commenting on. He said, yeah, we literally bought into an open market sale for Jupe. Basically, open market equals fundraising, only that rather than buy the seed round, round A, B, C, D, seed, pre-seed, private round, we bought a freaking IPO'd on the stock market day. Literally, whatever he says. So, um, you know, when you see this, you're like, ah, gotcha. It's the worst thing of all time. It, they're dumping on us. And of course, because that's the natural inclination. Trust me, when I read this, I'm like, these sons of... And I was like, maybe it is. However, there's always two sides of the story. So another ex-user, Jupiter team, had put in... Another ex-user, our Twitter user, stated that Jupiter team had put in a moon protection on the Jupe token launch so that prices would not exceed 0.70 cents until the Jupiter team reached 100 million. Then thus, they could dump on everybody. People are participating in a sale without even realizing it. The founder of Jupiter, Mao, yeah, sure, wrote an ex post the team would have received more funds had they opted for an over-the-counter deal or a regular IDO. All right. They launched their token to ensure that airdrop recipients would be able to sell into a massive pool while prospective buyers would have their assurance that there would be a big enough pool to absorb selling pressure from airdrops. Now, reading right th this right here, you probably think to yourself, there's, you know, of course, there's two sides of every story, but that's just one person's opinion. Of course, the founder is going to come and, you know, go to bat for his team and then leave everybody out in the cold. And I can see it. However, Blockwork research analyst Ren Yu Kong noted that much of the criticism around the Jupiter airdrop has been unwarranted. Fundamentally, Jupiter set a price and evaluation that they were willing to launch at, in this case, four to seven bucks or billion fully diluted value. It's no different to investment bankers setting an IPO price, which essentially they're just guessing, which a company is willing to sell shares at. No one is forcing participants to buy if they don't like the valuation in the launch pool. Granted, maybe one have preferred more free market price discovery, but that's easier said than done. This is the big thing. When you're gonna get into stuff like this, just know that airdrops are great, it's free. We're gonna do an airdrop actually today over on my second channel, Dan DJ, and this will be the third airdrop with Myro. I'm gonna give away 10,000 Myro again, which is probably about a thousand bucks. So stick around, I'll, I'll share that with you. But it really just comes down to this. It's risky. If you're going to get into this, just understand that uh, there are people behind the scenes pulling levers, and they may be pulling two, three, four at a time, and you'll never know exactly what's going on. The only way to really get around this, of course, is to do as much research as you can. And I know what you're thinking. I've done as much research as I possibly can. I still get screwed over. And that's true. And it's going to happen. So if you're an investor, just know that these things will continue to happen. And one of the safest things you can probably do is get into a project that you like, some of the people that you actually trust and hold on for dear life because that's only really what it comes down to is just sticking around for quite the long time. But the last thing comes out of this. All this stuff gets wiped away if the price is good. How's Jupiter doing? <laughs> doing better than Bitcoin today, I'll tell you that. It's up roughly almost 5%, 4.4 or so. And that, of course, is over 24 hours. So even with all the controversy and things like that, hey, if you got in around 40 cents, what it was, still doing pretty good. Now, if you take a look at seven days, I had understood that actually the price, the beginning was 40 cents, but CoinGecko has it at 74 cents. All right. So maybe you didn't buy at the very top when it actually launched and just waited a little bit like a reasonable, rational person would actually do. You would have got it like 50 cents, 60 cents, and you'd have been just fine. Anyhow, I bought some somewhere around 60 cents and I'm happy. Let's see what actually happened. So let me just think about that in the comment section. And then lastly, I really thought this was an interesting piece, which is US Department of Energy demand, demands consumption stats from Bitcoin miners. I find it interesting because Senator Lummis from Wyoming came out and said that there is uh, some very delicate negotiations going on behind the scenes for stable coins and crypto legislation. Then there was also a story about Senator Elizabeth Warren, who comes out and states that she's going to reinvigorate her campaign for the illicit activity that's being done by Bitcoin and digital assets. And now we have this. U.S. Department of Energy demands consumption stats. Why do they do this? Let's take a look. So the survey, which was filed as an emergency collection of data request, was authorized by the Office of Management and Budget on January 26. And uh, I linked this in the description. You can view it yourself if you're bored, I suppose. But yeah, uh, Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs 
Cryptocurrency Mining Facility Survey, OMB approves the emergency request consistent with requirements for emergency approval. I find it very odd that it's that pressing, but uh, here we are. So the OMB wrote this, recognizing that this emergency collection is experimental and provisional with the understood intention that EIA, the Energy Investment Authority, no, that's not right. The, the energy, the energy, God dang it. The Energy Efficiency Office, something like that, wants to build to a new standard collection. The OMB wrote in its approval. Correct me in the comment section. I know that I said that wrong. We will specifically focus on how the energy demand for crypto mining is evolving, identify geographic areas of high growth, and quantify the sources of electricity uses to meet crypto mining demand. In 2022, lawmakers, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, asked federal regulators to make crypto mining disclose their emissions and energy tax usage. So coming all through this, somebody reading this from the outside would probably think to themselves, oh, well, the energy office wants to know a lot of information about Bitcoin. That can't be good. It is, I think, a normal occurrence. And if we look at it like that, it looks pretty, you know, like, oh, maybe they're going to try to crack down. That's what everybody would think, right? But I will tell you, if you look behind the scenes as far as like, because that's one of the biggest misnomers about how much electrical usage Bitcoin actually uses, as opposed to the renewable resources and the resources that would just be wasted. And because of this, I actually put together this, it was a form, actually it was a, a, a Google Slides, and it was from a, que a question that Crypto T put out. And the whole, this whole piece was all about why Bitcoin. And Crypto T says, I was speaking with a co-developer for a bank and asked him about Bitcoin. He said the idea of losing all your money from a hack or corrupted hard drive is not worth the risk. I said, that's why you don't store your keys on a computer. He said, so this is the future of digital tech and you want me to use a pen and paper? And it bugged me a lot to think about like what would be the appropriate response. And I I was gonna put this out on the weekend and I'll, I still will, but there was just this one piece that I wanted to go over with you, which is electrical usage, which is, 100% relevant to what we just talked about as far as the uh, emergency from the OMB office, but they want to know the information. So this is the same thing going over and over again. This is the same thing that in 2017, Bitcoin uses more energy than most countries and it's destroying the environment. Well, first of all, uh, they're not that far off. It does use as much, as much electricity as a country. I'm going to, this is from Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Index. And it says very clearly, that for the energy usage, it is between South Africa, Egypt, and Poland and Malaysia, sitting right there, I think, in the 26th, 8th spot, somewhere around there. So that's true, but it uses a boatload of electricity. However, just know this. A lot of it is for renewable use resources, and then also more than a billion dollars of natural gas goes up in smoke every year through flaring. And this flaring process, you have two options. You can flare this for natural gas and blow it off into the actual our environment, which is very detrimental, or you can capture those resources and use those for Bitcoin miners. And the reason why this actually works out so well is because you can get Bitcoin miners and move them into those areas to transport that into Bitcoin mining. Because the problem is, ah, that's what it is, EIA, Energy Information Administration. Finally, I got it. If you take a look at it, there's, there's three things here. First of all, to move energy from one source to another, did you know that more than 60% of energy used for, elect, for generation is lost in conversion? So to get it from what you're actually doing to the homes or to the businesses of people, you're losing 60% anyhow. And I'm not gonna move my house right next to the, to the actual centralized power grid. It just is not gonna work, but I can even move all my Bitcoin miners. So in that situation, energy that would have been lost is now being used for Bitcoin mining. Fantastic. Also, in the great state of Texas, where I live roughly three months, four months out of the year, what they do is they use that extra energy and they actually pay for it. And then as time goes on, if it's too hot or it's too cold, then they shut down and they actually, the uh, Texas Energy Office actually pays them to do so because they're using this excessive energy. So yes, it does use a boatload of energy, but it uses it in a conservative manner. And lastly, and I want to talk about this. This is a great piece. When I'm talking about moving the Bitcoin miners to the location to actually use the excess of energy, which would all otherwise be wasted, 
It can also do a circular, a circular economy through electrical usage and selling of Bitcoin to support different areas of the globe. This is what I'm talking about. This was a great piece from Bitcoin Shooter. And I linked his uh, profile in the description. This is about four minutes and it's gonna make, so this is gonna be crystal clear as to electrical usage of why the energy demands of what it's used, what it can actually do, and why this form that is being asked by the US government uh, could be potentially a big nothing burger. So I want you to make sure that you hear this crystal clear. Again, this is about four minutes. Just take a listen to this, pretty good. 400 million Africans live without electricity. But that's changing. I have three kettles. When using a market for chopping that fodder, I would have used two or three hours to chop enough food for my kettle. But with this, 10 minutes. It is very fast. Time is so important. Most important. Most important. Our kids have improved in their studies. They couldn't study well because we were using candles and kerosene, which will damage our eyes because of the smoke. And we also see the benefit because we charge our phones well, we watch TV, things have been perfect, a comfortable life. Wow, amazing. How did they get power? It starts with naturally running water, which feeds into a hydro power plant. Problem is, it's normally not profitable to build a rural power plant like this. My name is Thomas Boomans. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hydrobox. We produce power for the local community. This site is located in Moranga County. That's in central Kenya. We were producing power, but back in the day, only able to sell 40%. And, and of course, economically, that doesn't make any sense. I got to know Eric and I was talking to him about our challenge. We said, okay, what if we came in and we gave you 100% usage right away? Our job at Gridless is Bitcoin mining. We'll walk in a 20 foot container with 130 miners in it. We turn it on, all of a sudden their finances are different. Just like the villager who's getting electricity for the first time, and now they can envision a different future. Same thing happens with energy providers. Immediately they can start thinking about the future and they can start thinking about, oh, there's that other site I wanted to go and energize. I haven't been able to get the money because I haven't been able to prove that I will be able to pay it back. Now I can. There's at least 90 locations that we've disqualified because there's simply not enough demand. So if now Bitcoin mining can come in, then all of a sudden it becomes viable for us to develop a project. That's a fundamental paradigm shift for a company like us. We win because we're mining Bitcoin. The power generation group wins because they're finally financially viable. And because of that, more people can be connected to electricity right away. It's absolutely phenomenal. What are your goals in life? Goals. Uh, to expanding my farming, rearing chicken, and other businesses like welding. Before power, were you thinking about these goals? No, 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 no. Impossible. Impossible. Thank you so much. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Yes, I hope you grow your family very big, okay? I'll grow. 20 kids, okay? <laughs> I'll grow. I'll grow. It's finally profitable to build rural power plants, thanks to Bitcoin mining. As a result, electricity is coming to Africa. All of a sudden, our market has opened up to the entire African continent because the Bitcoin mining can basically come anywhere we go. Then all of a sudden, we can be developing 50, 100, 200, 300 megawatts. If we deploy 300 megawatts in rural Africa, then we're able to change and impact the lives between 7 and 10 million people. 
Yeah. So, and then it's going to ask you, you know, if you want to support the next next project, which I uh, would like to do, uh, you can go ahead and do that. The link for Bitcoin Shooter and those uh, those documentaries that, that he is producing, there is a link in the description. You can follow him and go from there. But again, this is all about just trying to get as much information as we possibly can out to everybody that we possibly can, especially when we're talking about, you know, when the U.S. Department comes out and says, "Hey, you guys are using too much energy," we want to we want to figure out just how much it is. Now we know that it's not just about taking a bunch of, of energy from everywhere, and of course, leaving people in the dark. It's actually a very easy topic to tackle. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then, lastly, before we take off and do a little Myro ah freebie for everybody, um, good news for Celsius users. So this is from Ionic Digital Community, which apparently was one of the uh, Celsius uh, mining operations and they are taking over the company. Now they rebranded to Ionic Digital. Celsius claim distribution made in the US dollars will be distributed by issuing and mailing some Celsius creditors a check. If you're in this category, you should have received or should receive below the email and it goes through all the different things that what you should actually do. On top of that, uh, Celsius creditors, uh, you also can have Venmo distribution started. Some Celsius creditors are entitled to liquid crypto distribution through Venmo are confirming starting to receive their claim code and distribution. Now, let me make this clear. You're not getting today's prices. Unfortunately, you're getting prices beforehand. So overall, generally, you're going to lose out. But what is pretty good is that we're getting our funds back. And I, can, and I for one, am ecstatic. If you want to learn more, more, learn more about it, I linked in the description, Ionic Digital Community. You can verify and follow them and, and figure out exactly what they want. If you have not found or have not gotten your information, it would probably behoove you to follow these guys and follow along to get everything else. Also, if you have other questions, follow uh, Simon Dixon and Aaron Bennett. Those are the guys are the real ones with the real alpha. And we go from there. And now let's do a little Q&A. We'll go from there. But if you're so inclined, we're going to be doing a live giveaway in the next 17 minutes over on the Dan DGen channel for Myro. Myro is uh, one of the top three stable or stable coins. <laughs> Excuse me. Nothing stable but Myro. Uh, meme coin on Solana ecosystem. And it's down a good 69% over seven days. So uh, congratulations if you took some profits. Or maybe it's not your opportunity to get in a little bit early as time goes on. Uh, excuse me, not early, but as it takes a, a big dip. So we're going to do a uh, giveaway, 10,000 Myro. This will be our third one. We've given away two days ago, three days ago, we gave away 10,000, which was roughly about, at that point, like 1,400 bucks. And then the day after, roughly $1,200. Then today it's worth whatever it's worth. So that's just uh, how it goes. Again, there's a link in the description, follow over there, but that's it for this piece. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.